Hi guys, it's Lee Anderton here, and I'm in the room today with the one and only Mr. Andy Timmons. Hello, Lee. Uh, How and are you? Andy's playing a, a clinic for us tonight um, in yes. Guildford. So there's a, uh, 150, 200 people coming tonight to see oh, him. Nice. But are we? But we we're not there. Him. Sorry. We, yeah, we're not there. You are, but we're not there. <laughs> we're not there. Um, so I grabbed him. I'm just putting the amp on standby. Okay. Yeah. Um, to quickly talk about you know a couple of things that Andy's doing at the moment project wise and predominantly really to talk about sort of guitars but Yay. let's let's kind of start off project wise yes. what's happening in the world of Andy Timmons at the I moment I just I just released uh, my first ever instructional uh, video series with a true fire company okay cool um but yeah really proud of, of uh, how it's turned out and they're great people to work with I've been kind of hesitant to do one and I've been asked for many years by different companies but these guys I really enjoyed um the integrity of the work they've done at this point, because they've got Larry Carlton and uh, nice. Sonny Landreth and Robin Ford yeah. as some of the, the, the series that they've done. And so I've just really enjoyed their work. Um, and so that just really came out at the beginning of October. So that's out there. I'm working on a new Andy Timmons band record currently. Um, and after this, I, I'll go to uh, LA on Wednesday to do a new protocol. Yes. Record with Simon Phillips. Simon Phillips. So I'm juggling, and I just over well, oh, here for what's the, the. What's the time signature you're trying to get your head? Right oh, there's something in 19. I don't know what's going on. It's a <laughs> I'll show you later. I should thank you. <laughs> One e and uh, two e. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think it's probably fair to say that, that you took, um, you, you didn't really go for sort of rock star fame. You've kind of been a sort of a, a just a working session sort of musician for a it, long part of your I, career. I think, I think in a way, you know, I, I've made the comment in the past that, you know, when I started playing guitar, it wasn't to be rich or famous. Yeah. And I've successfully avoided both of those <laughs> things. You know what I mean? No, but it's kind of true. Those those things, and I've experienced some of, you know, with in the Danger Danger years back in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, we were on a major label, which yeah. was kind of this, you know, mythical thing to achieve. And it was so that was kind of nice. But in a way, it kind of let me know that that's not why I do what I do. It just, oh, nice. it was, there was so many things that were involved in, 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 in maintaining that type of career that had nothing to do with the music. Yeah. And I learned that, and that's what I learned about myself at that point. Um, so af after that fact, I've been very, really blessed to be able to just kind of do what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, meaning, just make, I've, made, I've made lots of solo records, and I've worked with other artists that I really yeah. care about. You know, meaning uh, Simon and uh, Olivia Newton John. I've worked with for yes. like the last fifteen years, and that's been a blessing, man. She's a wonderful uh, person, an amazing singer. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have the, the the level of notoriety as some other players, but I've, I've, I'm really happy that I've kind of done things on my own terms. Right. And, and 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 with the blessing of the internet, is yeah. people will find you if you have any merit. You know, it, it, of any genre of music or any any player. That's what. You know, people are always asking me, what do I need to do to, you know, what, how do I get... So you just have to be great. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of a funny thing to say, but in the old days, it was you had to be more than great. You had to be extremely fortunate and, and go to the right place and have the right guy notice yeah. you or whatever it might be. But now, if you're really great, you can be Andy McKee sitting at home and make a couple of videos. Yeah. And he's making beautiful music, and people, people will find that. And I've always yeah. liked... Because, you know, I've, I've always sort of followed... Um, you as a player, and I've always liked. It's the one guy. Probably, I, somebody's been following. No, me. I, it was you. As a, as a personal <laughs> thing, I kind of, I've, I've always been um, fascinated by how players uh, can take, can be technically incredibly adept, but mm. not lose the sense of music and melody oh, in their playing. Oh, well, thank you. So I like. Oh, that's what I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. So and I think it's kind of, as yeah. I said, there's some guys that you're incredibly technically adept and yeah. talented, but almost that takes over. Uh, and yeah, I, I like in your. It's a dangerous tool to yeah, have. I like in your style that it's yeah. you know that you, there always seems to be a strong sense of melody and well, feel and everything. In your well, I appreciate so. that. I, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I, just, I just grew up a music fan. Yeah. Before even being a, you know a technical guitarist, I just wanted to hear great songs, and that's what yeah. still makes me happy. Yeah. I love hearing great players, but in, in that case, I might get bored a little quickly if it's just that. That's a great color to have on your palette, be it if yeah. we're talking about technique and chops, but yeah, there's gotta be 
something for the audience to hang their hat on, you know. And, and that's and that's what I want to hear too. I, you know, I saw Ingve for the first time. Yep. Um, who, you know, I've I've always had a bit of an opinion about, as in, oh, he's great. You know, I can I can listen to a few songs on the records, but I might kind of tire pretty easily. It's yep. by far one of the best guitar performances I've ever seen. I think he's the guy is absolutely. He's brilliant. a live phenomenon. Isn't he's a live he? phenomenon. And, you, and like you say, in the record, unless you're really into it, you need it's, you it's, need to be dedicated to yeah. that style of music to to want to hear a whole record of yeah. it. But I'm so glad I went because yeah. it kind of flipped me around a little bit. On uh, you know this guy, he, I'm glad I went because he, you know, he's, he yeah. is iconic. He's a he's a. Um, Are the G3 uh, things still? I mean, is that does that ever is that ever likely to happen again? Oh yeah, I'm, not, I'm sure Joe will keep that going. Um, we just did G4 actually. Okay. Which was it was a guitar camp. It was uh, me and uh, Paul Gilbert, uh, Mike Keneally, and Joe. Right. And we spent a week together, and uh, 100 or 200 some, people. Some quite good tutors at that. Time. But, yeah, they were, you know. Not well, I tell you bad. what, you, you know what, <laughs> you say that, but that's exactly the point. They're, they're all great players, yeah. but they're equally good communicators, yeah. which is not always the case. You know, how do you talk about the, this thing that we do, but these guys are very adept mm -hmm. at that, especially Joe. Yeah. Have you read his book? He's got no. an autobiography. Highly recommend his. And I read Ingves too, but I read uh, Joe's autobiography. It's immensely inspiring, especially the first couple of chapters where it's kind of his childhood and how he's getting it together. And and young Steve Fye comes over, who's twelve. Right. Joe's sixteen. Yeah. That's a huge age difference. Yeah. As far as when you're in high school and there's that 16 year old kid, they talk about it. they'd walk down the hallway and they'd pass. What are Joe, the chances? Yeah, Joe would Joe would pass by the yeah. hall. He said hi. Wow, that's what was he wearing? Oh, he had the cool bell body. You know. But that hour, it's, and Steve Biden mentions this that the hour that he went to Joe's uh, house and yeah. it, it, he was teaching in his bedroom. He's that that was his. He looked forward to that one hour every week. That was his. That was his thing. That he, and it's, so it's really beautiful. It's, it's so, but you know, I was great. Joe's me. a great teacher. Yeah. I know we had uh, um, Robin Ford did a, a clinic for us a year oh, or so yeah. ago, oh, love. and he was talking about um, the lessons he used to have with Joe Pass. And you, and you just sort of I never know he had lessons with Joe it, Pass. I'm wow. sure. I'm sure it was Robin who said yeah. that. Um, and, it, and you just end up going, isn't it kind of weird? How, or maybe it's just a, maybe it's an LA thing. I don't know. Yeah. But um, just how kind of great guitar players seem to somehow have a story about another great guitar player. Yeah, sort of, yeah, um, maybe so. But that, yeah, anyway. yeah, the Carl Place area. I didn't know Mike Keneally was from the same area. Right. Yeah, so there's something in the water out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we should, we should talk about guitar. We can talk about we? guitars because um, we're guitar geeks. So, how long have you been an Ivanes uh, artist for? I think I started working with them in the early 90s. I think it was 91 or 92. Mm -hmm. And I'd been with Kramer Guitars prior to that when I joined Danger Danger. And and I, and I enjoyed the Kramer. Neon, I had Kramer. neon pink. I had ice the, hockey. Head there was one that wasn't yeah. an ad with a neon pink yeah, guitar. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> but no, we I, there was a guitar they had called the Sustainer, and it was a Floyd Rose Sustainer. Yeah. I think the first one that came out, and just you know, classic black. And you know, anyway, that was my main guitar for quite a while. But Kramer eventually kind of uh, fell by the wayside. They went out of business. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure how that happened, but it did. And so I was in kind of a, a, a fortunate position in that I was in a band that was on MTV, mm -hmm. and so there was plenty of companies that I think would want to work with me at that point, but. I, I went to an AM show and I kind of looking around to see what company might be the best one that I'd, I'd like to be associated mm -hmm. with. Of course, at that point, Ibanez already had Joe Satriani and Steve Vai and Paul Gilbert. Reb Beach, who was a good friend of mine, was, was using their guitars at the time. Sean Lane, even. Yeah. Um, I thought, well, I'd like to be, I wouldn't mind being associated with these guys. Yeah. So um, I had met the artist relations guy, Chris Kelly, at the time. He's no longer with the company, but said, yeah, you know, we don't really like your band, but we like you, <laughs> I mean, just being honest. Meaning that in, in the Danger Danger days, so, but we developed a relationship and, and eventually convinced the Japanese uh, uh, company to, to sign me. And I was in a position, of that, a position at that point where they asked, what's your ultimate guitar? Well, yeah. I had no idea. I'd never had the luxury of kind of going through that process. And we did, we started at ground one and they provided me with some of their USA customs and I tried all these things out, but I'd, always, I'd had this old Strat neck. It wasn't a Fender, but it was a Strat-esque neck that was just a parts parts neck, and that's what I sent them, and they copied that neck, um, and that, that, that that's what became this guitar. This was built 
Uh, February 14th, 1994. Wow. Valentine's Day. So you, it hasn't changed a lot, your artist model, over the years? then. No, the, the only thing that's it. changed, I, I went from the Spurzels to the Godos, mm -hmm. and originally this was a Jeff Beck, uh, Seymour Duncan, mm -hmm. but Steve Blucher, DiMarzio, uh, worked with me on a custom humbucker, and that's what I use now. And this is, this is the, the, the sort of the premium edition? Well, this was the, this, this is, this is the this original is, oh, prototype. The original, yeah. the, the original signature guitar is called, is the, the premium edition, mm -hmm. and that, uh, my whole goal with that guitar and with Ivan is, I, I, if I was going to have a signature guitar, I wanted it to be exactly the yeah. guitar that I play. I didn't yeah. want to, I didn't want somebody to have to go. Is this really what he plays? Because yeah. there's a lot of that out there when there's yeah. a signature. The, people are kind of suspicious and, right, and rightly so. So I refuse to cut any corners in it, it at the expense of the expense. You know what I mean? Because it became kind of one of the more one of the more expensive Ibanez guitars. Yeah. But I was pleased. It was accurate. I was, and it took a long time. It took about a year mm. of prototype to get right. I think it's quite nice that the sort of what's become you know, quite, f not fashionable, but, you know, all the sort of the the, the, the real super strati kind of, like the yes. Sur and the Anderson guitars. And those, and, yeah. And they're great guitars, and I think what's quite nice on this is, is this is a slightly more kind of traditional throwback for Ibanez, isn't it? So it is, and, and, and unusually so. So basically they came to me and they had, uh, they mentioned that they had a new factory in, in Indonesia that were mm -hmm. producing really great guitars. Would you be into trying to come up with a more affordable version of your guitar? And I was ex I was extremely skeptical to start off with, mm -hmm. to be honest. Again, my, my mode of thinking having been, it needs to be exactly my guitar, right? So I said, well, let us make you a prototype and just yeah. see. So I thought, okay, here comes the process. Again, we spent a year on this one. Mm -hmm. They brought me the first prototype for the AT, what became the AT-10P, uh, yeah, Prestige, right? Yeah. Um, I had nothing to say. The, the neck was exactly what it needed to be. The, the, the construct was uh, was fantastic. The only thing that's different um, is the bridge. This is a more yeah. traditional style bridge. So this is a Wilkinson bridge, but very yeah. much like a vintage Fender. It's very much like a, a vintage. And the tuners are their version, basically, of what I'm using. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's really it's it's basically the same guitar and sonically fantastic. I love. I think it looks amazing. What's the, the, what's the a story little behind the? Because I, I was fiddling with this earlier on, and yeah. um, these are a little darker, aren't they, than sort of single coil type? Well, pickups. that's it. They, they're the the Marzio Cruisers that I've always used in my in, in, since I've had this guitar, um, and to me, they they have a single coil kind of voice, um, yet they're humbucking, so it matches pretty well with yeah. my bridge humbucker. But it's kind of become a part of my tone. Just you know, when you think about me playing Electric Gypsy or some mm -hmm. of these things. That's that pickup, and it, these are the same pickups that are in are, are in this guitar. So it's the same electronics. Really nice bolt on, but a, a yeah. nice contoured kind of neck heel. Right, right, right. So, so pretty much um, identical. Show yeah. the people the back of your guitar. I'd love. It's a bit worn. We were talking about uh, relict. Now, presumably, <laughs> this is this is just a. a, a Polyurethane style finish. It's not a nitro finish. I have to be. I have no idea but, what it is. I mean, because in order to wear that through, you yeah. have given that. Well, you can tell this has a been refretted five times. It's been. It's yeah. been around the block. So yeah, it's it's been my main guitar since yeah. since it's, I received we, it. From we should them. hear it. We should really kind of hear well, maybe just a couple of the tones. Want. Yeah, absolutely. If I'm allowed to. I think so. It's been one of those days, folks, where everything's kind of blown up. So <laughs> let's just. Um... asking a Let me get some of the out of you know out of phase so definitely not quite as quacky and chimey yeah, I mean, you take as your head off it does it but it does it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's really pleasant so when you get a little bit of gain yeah. on that pick So that's been again. <laughs> you can see I'm, I'm attached. No, it sounds great. Um, you. Do you mind plugging this one in? Not at all. Yeah, we haven't we haven't tuned it yet. Let's see what we got. Well, I hope so. I, I noticed. Trade I'm, I'm guessing that this was all dirty. You can have that. Yeah. One. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
The strings I noticed on there were yeah. pretty heavy, so I'm guessing it's uh, what 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 you um, specify. Is it just a ten? It should, it should be. You know, again, it? I haven't. Standard, I haven't standard strat scale. Then, I haven't so. played. Uh, this guitar, yeah. This is a funky looking bridge on this. What? what that's what a, that's this? that's also a Wilkinson. Is it? That's a Trev Wilkinson design. And um, I don't know. We know Trev. Love, he's a British oh, he's guy. A, we yeah, like Trev. A lo lovely lad. Uh, tell me the story about the um, why the middle two screws are missing from your trim. Uh, they never they, they never put them on there. I don't, seriously, I I know that some people do that to help with tuning stability. Yeah. I think. Um, but uh, <laughs> my honest, complete answer is I just that's the way it came when they when they sent that's it to awesome. me. So. There was there was no there was no uh, recommendation for me. So and loads of springs on the back. Case, I got so you, in, in, you like in, in this guitar. I've got really you know on the deck as they say. Mm -hmm. There's no. I, I occasionally I have a guitar set up um, with slightly floating, which I, I love to get some of those inflections. But I, I'm a pretty aggressive player. My technique's pretty heavy, so I'll tend to dig in pretty hard. And then with a floating trim, you know that can be a little dodgy. <laughs> Oddly enough, it comes with the licks. Is that out of the box, folks? I haven't, I did, we haven't even picked this guitar no, up. Well, I love that. That's it sounds great. pretty nice. Now it's going to be out of tune because it's been What's the, the album that you did before the uh, Sgt. Pepper one? That's a record called Resolution. Resolution. Yeah. That's a, that's a great album. Thank you, man. Well, some tunes on that one. Th thank you. And that's, uh, that's what we're working on now. It's going to be kind of the next step from that record. Yeah. That was done with the, with the, the credo of we didn't do any overdubs. Wow. So that's all one guitar, bass, and drums. There's, no, there's a couple of cheats here and there, but it's mainly that's what got me excited about really playing instrumental guitar again yeah. because when we started the, that record it was like rhythm guitar okay and then let's play some melodies and I was like that's been so done I literally sat for a year because I was just really I was like ah, I'm not even into it but th it was something Steve Vai had said to me um, when there were some tracks that I'd released on the previous record that that were um, only one guitar there was a couple sections he's like oh I love that I can hear the fingers on the frets it's not all cluttered yeah, yeah. Wow, maybe. What if I did a whole record? What if I could get away with a whole just you know to There's impress my, to impress my older brother kind of thing? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, less is more. Mm -hmm. it, but I had to really kind of uh, you know rethink how I was going to play because I had to play melodies and and and, and uh, support that with any harmony that I could. Mm -hmm. So kind of coming from the Joe Pass world of chord melody, yeah. You can't play maybe that you can't use those those kind of extensions on a distorted guitar tone, but it really led me down that path of like, what can I do to? And I think that's important to try and just yes. you know challenge yourself to find out. To, I sometimes think that's that's sometimes that the best thing that you can do as as a guitar player is yeah. just get rid of all the effects, yes. all of the, and just plug in. Yes. And see. Well, I didn't say get rid of effects yet. No, but you know. No, no, I, I still have my whoopee. My, I got my this delay. This is not. A, this is not. Uh, I mean, just you guys can't see, but all Andy has on the floor here is we're, we're going into the clean tone of a of a boogie Lone Star, using a Keeley modded uh, Ibanez tube screamer for the drive sound and a and a timeline, a Strymon yeah. timeline, and it's like yeah. it just sounds. But it, you almost kind of go. You don't need. What else do you need? So yeah, it's you, you, you can you can get away with a very little. But we, as guitarists, we, we love the gadgets, you know, it's like, oh, if I had that one pedal, then, you know. So that, that that's the elusive, I, and, I, and I love going down that path of experimenting. You're, the gig you were at last night, did you have like a, you know, three meter long pedal board? I did, but I only used, I used two pedals the whole night. Awesome. I had one gain pedal, and, no, I, I take that back, I had the Keeley uh, Blues Driver for us one certain sound, but it was mainly one gain and one delay, and it's, that's all I needed. We should say so. The guitar that Andy has now yes. is a new one, a, a, a sort of an alternative version of this. That's yes. I think only coming in the um, premium. In run. the premium run, yes. This is a prototype they made for me, maybe 
it's been four or five years ago. Yeah. Um, I really wanted a guitar that looked like the guitar Jeff Beck had on the cover of Wired, right? I love that Olympic white kind of vibe. And so they made it exactly to the, the next specs of, um, of my AT100, but obviously in a rosewood board. And uh, I couldn't be happier with it. I started playing it live on the Simon Phillips tour, and it got such a reaction online that they said, well, maybe we could put out a limited run of that. So they are. You know, is that white with the rosewood board? It's got a, a nice, classic mm -hmm. look. Yeah. And the, this one really sounds beautiful. Nice tone to it. So it's full, isn't it? It's got a full, it's really tone, full tone to it. Yeah. Really. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. Well, look, I'm going to wrap this up. I think now. Um, yes. So we, apparently we have a gig. Well, yes, we have a gig <laughs> to go to. So I'll put some links in the description below where yes. you can visit Andy's website. Thank you. Thank it's you. easy to remember. I think it's just andytimmons.com. Yeah, and you can find me on Facebook um, pretty easily. There's an official page that I have uh, plenty of room on. The, ah, cool. You know, when the personal pages first started, I didn't realize that there was yeah, a, it's a capped, limit, isn't it? Yeah, and I just I was just anybody that wanted to be my friend. Well, of course I want a friend. Okay, even though it's you know, what does six 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 mean? I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> I have some strange friends on there, but. Anyway, if you yeah, find me on online, it's easy. And check out the True Fire video. I'm very proud of that. You can go to my website and see that. Well, I can put a link to it. Oh, great. Thank you for that. Video. Awesome. So, anyway, we're off to a Thank gig. You. Thank you, Lee. I really been, appreciate it, man. I've been Lee from Anderton's, the Yay. Timmons. Hello. And uh, we'll see you next Goodbye. time. Goodbye. You say hello. I say hello.